Now let's see example one. Example one, diagram twelve shows a graph of potential difference v against time t of an alternating current. Find the root mean square voltage of the power supply. So root mean square means effective uh, voltage. Huh? Root mean square voltage or the effective voltage. Uh, so we know that the V RMS is equal to VP divided by square root of 2, right? And uh, VP is equal to uh, 14. Eh? VP equal to 14. 14 divided by square root of 2. Okay, use your calculator. Give me the answer. 9.9. 9.9 volt. So that's how we find the root mean square, uh, root mean square voltage. Example two. So the diagram above shows the waveform of an alternating current supply. What is the root mean square values of the current? Okay, same thing. I RMS equals to peak currents divided by two. The peak current is two point zero divided by square root of two. Okay, the answer is one point four. One point four. Just round it up to one point four. Okay. Example three. An alternating current with the waveform that's shown in the diagram above flows through a 5 ohm resistor. Find the power of the resistor. Uh, if you still remember, we have a few formula to find power, right? P equal to IV, P equal to I square R, and P equal to V square over R. Okay, now in this case, uh, which Formula that you want to use. Formula 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Which one you want to use? 2, uh, okay, 2. Because we have resistor and we have current, uh, so, so we can find the power, power P. Now, remember, for alternating current, for alternating currents, uh, if you want to find the power, the current and the voltage that you use uh, must be the root mean square currents or root mean square voltage. So the P equal to I RMS square R. So you cannot straight away uh, because sometimes some students say P equals to I R. Okay. And okay, I R 14 because there's number here 14. So they write 14. And then so the R is a 5. Okay. So this is equal to uh, 70. Uh, what? This is not correct. It's not correct. Eh? Why? Because the current that you use cannot be the peak current. Okay, cannot be the peak current. It must be the root mean square current because this is an effective current. This is the real, actual current. Like uh, you want to compare, you cannot use your, the 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 the, the student get highest mark in your classroom to compare with, uh, with another class, right? So if you want to find the power, first of all, we must find the root mean square current eh? root mean square current is equal to 14 divided by root 2 okay this is equal to 9.9 .9 ampere so therefore the power is equal to 9.9 .9 times 5 so what's the answer what's the power 9.9 .9 times 5 49.5 So yes, need to put the square, i square r, uh, p equal to i square r. Oh, then the thing is correct, okay? 490. This 14, this must be negative 14. Must be the same. So you can either use this one or this one, but but so if you want to use this one, then ignore the negative. Uh. Ignore the negative. So uh, that's how you find the power, uh, how you find the power. So to find the power, remember, you must use the root mean square currents and the root mean square voltage, huh? okay? The resistance, okay. Resistance is always the same, okay? 5 ohm means 5 ohm. We don't have root mean square resistance, huh? okay? Example 4, a sinusoidal is alternating currents of root mean square value 4. Now this RMS uh, is only for sinusoidal currents, huh? current like this, huh? sinusoidal currents. Current like this cannot, huh? you cannot use this for current like this. It's only for sinusoidal. Uh, this case they give you that uh, the the I RMS uh, the I RMS is equal to four point zero zero ampere. Uh, they want you to find the peak current IP. 
So again, we use the same formula, I RMS equal to IP divided by root two, and therefore IP equal to the I RMS four multiplied by root two. So what's the answer? 5.7, 5.7 ampere. So this is the peak current. So sometimes they may give you the root mean square current and ask you to find the peak current. Okay, the last one. Uh, the graph above shows the variations with times t of a sinusoidal alternating current. Find the peak current. Okay, what's the peak current? IP equal to what? 5 ampere, yes. Okay. B, uh, the root mean square current. Yes, come on, tell me what's the root mean square current? 3.5 ampere, right? C, the frequency. Uh, the frequency of the current. Okay, frequency, not enough information given. Eh? Okay. For the frequency, yeah, you must have some value here, okay? Let's say uh, this is uh, 0 0.06. 0 0.06. This is 0 0.06. Uh, to find the frequency, eh? to find the frequency, we can use the formula f f equal to one over t, eh? uh, where f is the frequency and t is the period. If you still remember this, we have learned this in wave wave, eh? okay, wave. Frequency equals to one divided by period. Eh? Now, what is period? Period is the time for one complete oscillation. Eh? So from here start, you go to the maximum, minimum, uh, zero, minimum, zero. Okay, this is one complete oscillations. From here. So this is one complete oscillations. So the time for one complete oscillation is uh, 0 0.04. Eh? 0 0.04. Uh, this is second, okay? Use seconds. So 0 0.04 seconds. So the period is 0 0.04 seconds. So uh, the frequency is 1 divided by 0 0.04. This is equal to uh, 25 hertz. So that is how we find uh, frequency from a graph. Eh? You must find the period first. Period is the time for one complete oscillations. Okay, complete oscillation is from uh, 0, maximum, minimum, 0. Or you can, if you start from here, then it's from uh, maximum to maximum. This is the period. Okay, you start from here, then it's from uh, zero, maximum, minimum, zero again. Uh, that is one complete oscillation. So the time for one complete oscillation is the period, and frequency is one divided by the period. Huh? So it's a uh, 25 hertz.